Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you and all to word and deed.
welcome this celebration service of worship as we ordain Charles Yvonne Underwood to the Ministry of Word and Sacrament. A special welcome to all of our guests, all of you from all saints that have come to this. We're especially grateful for your important role in bringing Charlie to this day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to our Father, who
all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. 
And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus in the Son. When God came to earth in the person of Jesus, he called disciples, students, trained. He was preparing them for the ultimate mission that he was starting. This mission would change everything in all places, in all times. So whom did Jesus call? Simon, Peter, and Andrew, James and John were the first four disciples that Jesus called. All were fishermen. Coincidence? I don't think so. <laughs> My father loved to fish. He was a master at catching pan fish, bluegills, as we call them in Minnesota, brim down here, perch, crappies. As a child, every year or two, he would say to me, Someday, someday we're going fishing in Canada. I talked to guys who have gone fishing in Canada, they just got started and caught a five-pound fish, but then their fishing guy just threw it back into the lake and said, we don't need any five-pounders. We only go for a big fish here. <laughs> I've never caught a five-pound fish. So I thought fishing in Canada must be like heaven. Some days I have said, about that fishing trip in the Near the end of my second year of seminary in St. Paul, I was given my internship assignment. I drove up to Emanuel Lutheran <coughs> Church in Juanita, Minnesota to meet my internship supervisor, Kirk. By the way, I like Kirk. First impressions of Emanuel Lutheran in Juanita, population 4,610. So positive to work. As I was about to leave Kirk's office, almost like an afterthought, he said, I don't know if we'd be interested in this, but uh, and it's fine if you don't start until June. But if you'd like to arrive a few days early, another pastor and my daughter and I are going to Rainy Lake on the Ontario side. I'm checking out a camp as a possibility for taking our youth group there uh, this summer. We're going to fish up there for a few days. You don't have to, but you're welcome to join us. It was not easy to contain myself. <laughs> I said something like, oh, oh, yeah, I do like fish. Uh, so yes, I could be here a few days early. Yes, I'd like to go fishing with you in Canada. Yes. Did you hear me say yes? <laughs> I went back to St. Paul, and I kept saying to myself, I'm going fishing in Canada. I can't believe it. I'm going fishing. During my internship here, I went fishing in Canada four times. I learned quite a bit about catching northern pike and walleye. But even better, I learned lessons about catching people. Charlie gave me this fishing rod when he was about to leave for seminary four years ago. It was an honor to receive this because Charlie gave it to me right after he caught a big bass on the Tennessee River. My recollection is that it was caught just off a small island reef, the Tennessee River, that you can see this place from the bridge that crosses the river just north of Scottsboro. Every time I cross that bridge coming or going to Atlanta, I look at that island and I think of Charlie fishing. We're here today to celebrate that our Lord has called another fisherman to go fish for people. Charlie has been called to preach the good news of Jesus and deliver the sacraments of holy baptism and the Lord's Supper. Charlie joins Simon Peter and Andrew, James and John, and countless others that our Lord has called, saying, Follow me, and we'll fish for people. Students of the Bible know that Mark is the and immediate gospel. That is, Mark made a habit of starting sentences with the words kai ethus, Greek words translated, and immediately. 
In that compact account of Jesus calling those four fishermen, two high ethos are in it. Jesus calls brothers Simon, Peter, and Andrew to follow him to fish for people, and immediately they left their nets and followed him. And next, Jesus sees James and John in their boat vending nets, and immediately Jesus calls them. They leave their father Zebedee and the hired men in the boat to follow him. Gospel writers, Gospel writer Mark's composition feature probably would not give him high grades for sentences starting with and immediately. But they give to Mark's Gospel a sense of urgency. From start to finish, there's a restlessness. And immediately shows how important this work of Jesus is, how crucial the message being communicated, and how clearly God is at work in the world as Jesus delivers this word from God for us. To say, when Charlie first sensed a call to the ordained ministry of catching people, he immediately dropped everything to follow, that would be an overstatement. The spirit of the risen Jesus kept pastoring Charlie for about 30 years before he relented and went to seminary. Yet during those years, Charlie kept listening and growing as a disciple. He certainly brought gifts and maturity to seminary that I didn't have at 22 when I started learning to fish for people. Charlie's gifts for fishing have been developed and refined, especially these past four years. This spring, the professors of Wartburg Seminary in Iowa and the Canacy Committee, the Southeastern Synod, agreed that Charlie had indeed been called by God and been properly prepared to go fishing. Today we have an experienced, skilled fisherman with us in Bishop Julian. He's taught me a lot about fishing. And he's here to give Charlie his fishing license. <laughs> You certainly have paid for it. You left Collins where you were serving with distinction to move to Iowa four years ago. Lana, an award-winning elementary school teacher. Charlie, a manager at Intergraph. When the school in Hazel Green could not do without Lana for more than one year, she came back here and it ended up meaning that those two had to live apart for almost two years. Paul, a few times in his writings, his letters, talks about all the sacrifices that he made for his calling to preach. <clears throat> you know plenty about sacrifices made to answer our Lord's call. You forfeited life together, the finances, and the comforts of home to answer this call to ministry. At your age, and with the work that you've done, you have a right to many blessings that you've chosen to forego. Like St. Paul, the urgency, the excitement, the adventure of a fishing for people has a grip on it. That's the Holy Spirit's lead. And we're here to celebrate that and assure you that you don't go fishing alone. Charlie gave me this fishing pole as he was about to go learn how to catch bigger fish, people. I'm grateful that not only the side of we had the privilege of supporting Charlie through this, but also, perhaps even more so, All Saints Luther and the supervision of Pastor Keith Cook and Huntsville were instrumental in getting us to today. For my conversations with Charlie over these last four years, I've gathered that at seminary he got some great fishing tips and some not so great. That was my experience too. And I think the most important year of my seminary training was not at the seminary. But not internship. That's where I learned to fish, not just for northerners and walleyes, but for people. Like Charlie, I was blessed by Kurt, an excellent internship supervisor. Charlie was blessed with Keith as an excellent internship supervisor. Like Charlie, I was embraced by kind and helpful congregation who saw it as part of their mission to teach us to fish. The best fishing tip that supervisors and church members and professors can give us is to keep looking to the one who called the first disciples to fish for people. 
So how did, how does, Jesus catch people? We might think of his miracles, healing and feeding and raising the dead. But none of these was his primary mission in taking on flesh and coming to earth. Jesus says so later in that same first chapter of Mark's Gospel where we heard the account of calling those poor fishermen. The context was that Jesus had just healed lots of people and cast demons out of lots of people. This all happened in the seaside town of Capernaum, a fishing town. Jesus got up early one morning and went by himself to a deserted place to pray. His disciples searched for him, found him, and urged him to come back to Capernaum where he was doing so well. But Jesus answers, listen to this, let's go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim also, for that's what I came out to do. We get that. Jesus didn't come to earth primarily to heal or to feed or to cast out demons. Those are good. Jesus did plenty of that. Did that to exhaustion. But Jesus comes right out and says it to his disciples, what is primary? What he came to do. He tells them, we need to move on so I can keep proclaiming the message. That, that is what I came to do. Jesus came to preach, to speak the word from God that the whole world needs to hear and is dying to hear. You, Charlie, are now called to speak that word. The difference between Jesus' is preaching and ours is simple. That especially shows clearly through the Gospel of John, written by one of those first fishermen Jesus called. Jesus came to announce, I am the one, I am your Lord, your Savior, your forgiveness, your life, now and forever. Whereas we, not just we ordained ones, but all of us, are called to announce, He is the one. He is, not you or me. We don't need to save the world. That's God's responsibility. But we are called to keep pointing others to Him and let the Spirit do His work. Charlie, the living Spirit of the risen Jesus will be your guide. It's all written down for you in the man. You know that. <laughs> the Spirit's been at work to tell you where you'll be fishing. Your basic operations will be Elizabeth Lutheran Church, all of Texas. But Jesus also tells you, tells all of us, go make disciples of all nations. This location is our base of operations from the Messiah Lutheran Church. But you know we also are fishing in Guatemala and Honduras and the Northwest Territories. Here in our area, over on Jordan Lane at Milestone Christian Academy at Madison Crossroads School, in Habitat for Humanity, houses near and far, and everywhere in our southeast Senate and ELCA's missions and Lutheran relief everywhere those go, which is pretty much everywhere on earth. Charlie, you know exactly what to fish with. Keep casting God's word out. As I said, when you faithfully do that, you're not responsible for results. That's God's job, not ours. But truth is, when God's word is casted out, it doesn't return back. It doesn't succeed in the purpose which you will say. Another thing about God's word that you will be casting. I've been doing this for over 30 years now, and I've never gotten to the bottom of God's sacrifice. Never even got a glimpse of the bottom. There's always something new in God's word. There's always a new presentation of God. Another fishing here. Keep listening for the Holy Spirit. As you already know, the Spirit will often speak through Lamb. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was me, man. <laughs> I'm anxious for the time when the two of you will be fishing together in Texas, as lots of people here know. Lamb is especially good at catching little ones. And we can never catch too many little ones when we're fishing with our Lord. Even the weest ones are precious to our Lord. Like so many of us, he seems to want to hold that. What this all boils down to, Charlie, is that we're here today to tell you, go fish. You've been trained, prepared, and called, so go fish. That charge comes from our Lord. Go fish.
Don't catch people with the good news of forgiveness, life, and salvation found only in Jesus. And once they're caught, you get to turn them loose and tell them, our Lord has set you free to live, free to serve, free to love this world that God so loves, free to share the good news of Jesus that has brought you. I hear that fishing is good in Texas, but with what we're casting, fishing should be good anywhere. So today, we send you with our blessings and prayers. We want you to be assured that you'll not be fishing alone. You are saved. Go fish. You are called. Go fish. You are free. Go fish. That's not the word just for Charlie. That's for all of you and for me. Let's go fish. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
Will you assume this office believing that the church's call is God's call to the ministry of word and sacrament? No. The church in which you are to be ordained confesses the Holy Scriptures are the word of God and are the norm of its faith and life. We accept, teach, and confess the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian Creeds. We also acknowledge the Lutheran Confessions as true witnesses and faithful expositions of the Holy Scriptures. Will you, therefore, preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and these creeds and confessions? No. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and faithful in your use of the means of grace? Will you pray for God's people, nourish them, with the word and sacraments, and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living. Will you give faithful witness in the world that God's love may be known in all that you do? Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For the Holy Catholic Church, that filled with your love, it may hunger for truth and thirst after righteousness. God bless you. For all members of the church, that they may serve you in true and godly lives. God of mercy. For Charles, called to be a pastor of the church, that sustained by your Holy Spirit, he may carry out his ministry with joy and a spirit of bold trust, serve your people, build up your church, and glorify your name. God of mercy. For all pastors, for all deaconesses, diaconal ministers, and associates in ministry, for Pastor Scott and Pastor Ruth, for presiding Bishop Mark and Bishop Julie, that together with all those responsible for the care and nurture of your people, they may support one another in serving Christ. God of mercy. For the peace of the church, that our divisions may be overcome, so that, united in Christ, we may serve the world and bear witness to the good news. God of mercy. Amen. For the nations of the world and their leaders, that they may work for justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. God of mercy. Amen. For the whole creation, that everything you have made be, may fulfill your purpose, and that we may exercise care for your diverse gifts. God of mercy. For well, the poor, the persecuted, the sick, the lonely, the forgotten, and for all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. God of mercy. For all those who have helped form Charles in his faith, and in thanksgiving for them, God of mercy. For the glorious company of all the saints, those who have died in faith and those who live in certain hope, we praise you that their witness may give us courage until the day of Jesus Christ. God of mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, we bless you for your infinite love in Christ our Lord, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. We thank you that by his death your son overcame death, and that raised by your mighty power he gives us new life. We praise you that having ascended into heaven, Christ pours out his gifts abundantly on the church, making some apostles, some prophets, some pastors and teachers to equip your people for their work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Eternal God, through your Son Jesus Christ, pour out your Holy Spirit upon Charles. Fill him with the gifts of grace for the ministry of word and sacrament. Bless his proclamation of your word and administration of your sacraments, so that your church may be gathered for praise and strengthened for service. Make him a faithful pastor patient teacher and wise counselor. Grant that in all things he may serve without reproach, that your people may be renewed and your name be glorified in the church. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Now the God of peace who brought in from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, may you complete in everything good, so that you may be God's will, working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, it is your turn to make some promises. Will you, assembled as the people of God and speaking for the whole church, receive Charles as a messenger of Jesus Christ, sent by God to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you regard him as a servant of Christ? We Help and honor him for his work's sake, and in all things, strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ. We will Then let it be acclaimed that Charles Ronald Underwood is a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ. He has Christ's authority to preach the word of God and administer the sacraments, serving God's people as together we bear God's created and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us welcome Pastor Charles Underwood.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, creator of the universe. For your goodness, we have been blessed with these gifts of bread and wine, which earth has given and human hands have made. They will become our spiritual food and drink, the body and blood of your Son. Blessed be God forever. Amen.
thank you, Almighty and gracious God, that you fed us with heavenly food, body and blood of your Son. Unite us through him in the fellowship of your Spirit. And you have again raised up among us a faithful servant for the ministry of worship and sacrament. Grant that we, with Charles, may joyfully serve you all our days and finally rejoice in your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 